What's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. My name is Adam. This is going to be episode 117, Saturday Night Special. I'm actually working on this a little bit ahead of schedule here because I want to try to get our videos done and uh, ready for you for the weekend because by the time you see this, I'm going to be hanging out with John down at his open house up in, uh, actually up <laughs> at his open house in Zanesville, Ohio. So I'm trying to get my stuff done ahead of time as I'll be hitting the road. Uh, coming up close to this weekend so we got some viewer mail still got some things that i had didn't have time to show last week so we're going to go ahead and try to catch up on all of our viewer mail i believe i got four packages here i want to show you and we'll try to get through these kind of quick and we'll go ahead and do a couple more of our photo entries for the avon photo challenge we'll get a couple of them in there and then this weekend this past weekend i finished off the hydraulic cylinder so i got a little bit of video of that putting the seals back together and then uh, putting them all together there. So we'll show that there. So I think it'll be a, a pretty decent episode for you and I hope you enjoy it. I uh, plan on getting the next installment of the KT parking attachment ready also. So it should be following this S&S. And once I, once I get that video, I'll actually be caught up on the, the machine work. So hopefully next week, whenever I get back from my trip, I uh, can spend a couple days and start getting some more of this machine work done. Got a, seems like I just got a lot of stuff going on. I have some other things that I need to do around here also, so I'm really trying to get back on this project and, and get it going. But anyway, uh, I look forward to meeting a few of you guys up there at the open house. A lot of you said that you've been coming, and John had actually texted me today and said that he's got 350 people reserve saying that they were coming so it's going to be a pretty pretty big event there's gonna be a lot of people there and i look forward to meeting everybody so hopefully we'll see you there soon we're going to go ahead and jump on our viewer mail now all right so the, the first one we got this week this is um geometric threading dies that's from jerry leach he's from bucksport maine and he has he's got a few of these geometric dies that go in a geometric uh, thread chasing die head and asked me uh, did I want them so he, he sent them on down here it's sort of a mix and match there's a few different sizes for different size heads but a couple of these sizes uh, let me see I can't remember which one which ones it is 5 sixteenths I'm not quite sure I do have a small die head I got a 5 sixteenths model and I think a couple of these dies might fit on there, but I actually had taken that to work a long time ago. So it's still in my toolbox there and I forgot to bring it home. But anyway, we got some, we got some dies there. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, put some of these to use later. I've got, already got a stash over there in granddad's box. So I'll put these over there with that. I did want to mention that uh, the package, what well, was kind of funny about that, this is the package that came in. You know, Jerry used flat rate box. Just be sure that you guys pack things well, wrap everything up real tight so that it can't fall out and get through these little cracks right here, and uh, stuff it full of paper or whatever so that it's not sliding around. It was They were a little loose in here, and two days in a row, my mail lady, I'll go out there and check my mail, she had one of these <laughs> sitting on top of the, the, the mail. I opened it up and I seen one. I see one die out there on top of the mail, and you know, and I was like, okay, I guess that one fell out of the box. And then the next day I went out there and the same thing. She had another one sitting on top of the mail. So I guess you know she must have had this box over there in her truck, and and they were rattling around and, and they fell out. She, I'm surprised she knew who they went to. It, it really surprised me that they were in my mailbox. But anyway, that was pretty cool that we got them all. So Jerry, thank you very much. Uh, these are always good to have around, especially whenever you use a geometric die head. So our next gift right here, we've got we've got an arbor, one inch arbor that we can use over here on the KT. This was given to me by Mark Schweeter. And he actually sent along a couple tools. We've got two of these arbors. And what it was, he wanted to share these with me and Keith Rucker. So one of them was a 50 taper. And one of them was a 40 taper. And the, the benefit of these, though, is that these, this is a shorter one. This is a 12-inch arbor, which my other ones, I believe, are 18-inch uh, maybe, 1-inch. 
18 inch length. So I told him, I was like, yeah, that'd be a nice one to have. It tightened up a little bit. So he sent them along. And so Key said he wanted the other one that's got the 40 taper. And I have not opened it up yet. But anyway, this is, this is Keith Rucker's right here. And he's also got one more tool that's going to go to Keith. And that's this guy here, which is another 40 taper holder. 40 taper arbor. It looks like for a Jacob's Chuck. So Keith's going to take that right there and, and uh, take the, the 40 taper arbor. So that was very, very kind of Mark to send those along. And by the way, uh, Keith is supposed to swing by here this week, I believe tomorrow. He's, he's passing through on, on business and he's bringing uh, something for me that I'm actually got from uh, Dale Derry in part of our trade. So actually I'm getting a, another dividing head from Dale, which Keith will have it because uh, he's bringing it over this way. Dale dropped it off whenever uh, he was over there visiting Keith. So he's gonna drop that off and then he'll pick up his arbor and take it with him. So, so we'll have, maybe next week we'll have a dividing head that we can share on, on SNS. But anyway, Mark, thank you very much for the arbor. And I hope this serves useful around here and we'll see it later on doing some work over here on the K&T. So this next package of goodies right here, this is some stuff that was sent to me by Ryan Washala. And he's known on YouTube as IL Gopher. He even has his own channel there. So Ryan, uh, he had acquired some surface grinding wheels here not too long ago and said he wanted to send me some, you know, cause it got the, the Covell surface grinder now, which uh, I got it up and running, but I haven't done anything with it yet. I haven't spent any time with it but I don't have any wheels for it yet. So he wanted to send along a few of these, which some of these will work for the grinder. So we've got, we've got a few different sizes. We have a six inch, we have a seven inch, and then we have some that are eight inch. I will say Ryan that the eight inch will not work on the grinder. I believe seven inches is the biggest wheel that that Covell will, will swing. It's even called a seven B. So I'm assuming that's what the seven is, is the max size wheel. But so I'm going to hold on to these and the, and the six inch for sure. I don't know if I'll end up having a use for the eight inches, but that's why I didn't take them out of the packaging here because you got them wrapped up really nice and protective. So I'm just going to hold on to these and and we can we can send those to somebody else who could use these surface grinding wheels whenever that time comes. So we'll just keep those packaged up. But anyway, thank you for these. These, these will be good to uh, put down there in the cabinet and I'll have them for the grinder. So hopefully we'll get to we get to use these one of these. These these are cup wheels. Unknown of the of all of the grades and hardness so far. I have not looked any of these things up. Wheels like this right here, so I'm not sure what grade that is, but they'll also need some of the some of the papers made for each side before they're before they're used. You can see like these wheels right here still have the factory paper from Norton on each side, which is what you need to have whenever you tighten up your arbors there. But good stuff, Ryan, I really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, sending them to me, okay? All right, so we got one more here, and this is from Chris Kramer out of Kansas City, Missouri. And Chris has sent in this really cool indicator for the shop here. Now this is a, this is a stared indicator but it's actually badged Kearney and Trekker on it, on the dial face in there. It is a tenth indicator and it still works. It is a little bit sticky, but it still works. It could, it could still be used. But I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and send this over to Mark, over to MR Tool Repair, and get him to go through it and see if we can get it functioning a little bit better like it should and get it clocked properly. But that's a pretty cool indicator right there. The lug back is a little different than what you normally see. It's got the threaded hole there, straight out the bottom. But it's got a real heavy weight to it. But that's pretty neat. He had, he had emailed me and showed me a picture of that and said, hey, I was cleaning up my shop and I come across this indicator that had Kearney and Trekker on it and thought that you would like to have it. So he wanted to send it my way. This is a pretty old one. It is pretty old there. But anyway, that was pretty cool. 
Chris, thank you very much. That's just a that's a nice addition to the tool collection around the shop here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get to a couple of our A bomb photo entries here. So our first entry, this was this picture was sent in by John and Fran Rasmus, and very cool picture because this is them in Antarctica. So there's the picture for you, and it's a picture of John himself there in. It says, "Here's my photo entry on." Icho Island, I think that's how you say it, the Antarctic, Antarctica Peninsula on February 25th, 2016. Please note the penguins and the snow. <laughs> John Rasmus and, he, and they are from Yuma, Arizona. Very cool picture from Antarctica there. And uh, he sent me another email later saying that he's, uh, he is a retired HVAC technician and he's worked on a lot of rotting equipment. So he says he appreciates my good work. <laughs> so he's he's seen a lot of the stuff like I've had to work on over the years too. So John, thank you very much for the picture. I really appreciate it. Very cool getting an entry there from Antarctica. So our next photo entry here. This was, These are some pictures that were sent in by Glacius Borba. And he is from South Brazil. He says close to Uruguay. So got some very cool, interesting pictures right here, and I'm gonna I gotta read a little bit, tell you what he, what's going on here. So uh, the photo uh, photo challenge pictures. This is from a local racetrack. The city is called Nova Santa Rita at Velo Park Velo Park Racetrack, and this is some Brazilian stock car racing. So they have. 500 horsepower V8 engines and I do see the Chevy emblem so it looks like maybe the Chevy SS uh, so he's he's machined some parts for these cars and he talks a little bit about them I'm gonna go ahead and throw the pictures up here so you can see them very first picture here is him standing in front of one of the cars and uh, this is one of the teams here that he has been doing a little bit of work for and he says what he's what he's been doing he, he made 900 of these special washers that they're able to use on the bodywork that uh, help control the aerodynamics aerodynamics of the car to allow wind to pass over them without you know disturbing it too much. That right there is a picture on the back of the car of two of the washers that he made. And then uh, this one here, he says that he found an A-bomb sized torque wrench. <laughs> and uh, there's my logo right next to it. He says that this is the torque wrench that they use on the, the lug nuts for the wheels before the race. Make sure they are uh, torqued down properly. And one more shot there of both of the cars. Very cool. So, very interesting pictures there that sent in by Glacius. And he had a very, very nice email. Uh, very long read, so I don't want to get into the whole thing. But uh, Glacius, if you're watching, I'm sure you are. Thank you very much for your photo entry. Those are some cool pictures right there. And I'm actually a fan of racing myself. I do like stock car racing, or here in the country it's called NASCAR. And I used to watch it every season, as many races as I could. But past couple years, my life's gotten pretty busy out here in the shop and doing this YouTube thing, and I just don't have time to watch racing anymore. I don't even have I don't even have TV anymore. All I have is just online and YouTube. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, thank you very much, Glacius. I'm going to get back on these hydraulic cylinders. I've got all the seals now. I'm going to go ahead and and put them all back together. So what I'm doing, I've already got all the the seals off of the glands, and then I take my uh, solvent right here and I just kind of give it a just a nice little clean out. And this stuff dries really fast. All right, those are all of our seals. And then I have some O-rings and stuff down here in the bag also. This is gonna be for our inch and a quarter rod. So let's see, there's our one inch wipers. There's our inch and a quarter seals. Backups. There's our one inch seals, so, alright, there we go, there's our MCNs. 
So this would be the wiper and the rod seal for here. And then we'll have our O-rings to put on as well. All right, so there's our new rod seal. And usually what I like to do is kind of put a little bit of grease on these things to make them go in easier and make the installation a little bit easier. Uh, you can use hydraulic oil. We also like to use STP oil treatment because it's really slick. So you can take, I'm just going to use a little bit of the Simplex red grease, just a little bit. You don't, you don't need much. Just rub it down good and <clears throat> get it greasy. Make sure that your lip side goes down. You know, it's going to go towards your piston side. It might be kind of hard to see what I'm doing here just because of the, the camera angle I got. And I'm working it down in that groove. I'm going to snap it in place. There it is. All right. <clears throat> we'll do our. Uh, we'll go ahead and do our O-rings first. So let's see. There's going to be our. There's going to be our bigger O-ring. Now it helps with these two. So you know, I'm just going to take just a little bit of grease, not much, just to kind of get it a little bit slick. And we'll go ahead and work your work it down okay there's that one now we also have a backup that'll go on first on this groove this is for your to seal the tube keep the oil from coming outside of the uh, through the threads here and then right here I don't have my scale on me I usually use my scale and so you use a pick and just kind of roll it to get it down to the one side of the groove there and then we're going to go with our other o-ring get it greased up get it started at one side of the groove work it around snap it in place alright so all we got left now is our wiper which is this guy right here these can be a little tricky, but it's kind of like installing an oil seal. Let me move this out of the way. What I want to do is just try to get it started with a uh, soft blow hammer here. block on it there we go now when we go to put this together I'm gonna go ahead and do it now get a little bit more grease put a little bit of grease on it put us a little bit of grease in here on these on these uh, the seal and the the wiper like so that one's ready to install so I'm gonna do this three more times and get all these ready then I'll show you putting this on so we got all four of our glands packed they're ready to go there are two one inch rods and our two inch and a quarter rods so we got these are the new O-rings that will go on to the end of the rod here. This will go on and then we'll tighten up our piston. Uh, but for that we got to slide our gland on. So let me go ahead and set up for that. Alright, so start with our gland first. And usually you have a nice bevel machined on the end of the rod. And anytime you make a rod you got to make sure that you put a nice chamfer so that you can get your seal started. There it is. Nice and tight. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and put a new O-ring on the end of the rod here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I want to clean this piston off. Just make sure any dust or anything is off of it. There it is, it pushed up on the O-ring. And we'll go back with our lock nut. Yeah, just a second. I'm just about done with this right here. All right, we got our, our nut torqued down. So we're ready to uh, put a little bit of grease on this piston here, and then we'll put it back in the tube. Put a little bit of grease on the piston there, a little bit extra on this O-ring. So we're ready to go back together with it. that o-ring meets the, uh, the cylinder bore in there that's when things will get tight on that o-ring hey just a second Got a nice fit now. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll show you one more. They're all about the same. Ease this gland on here. Make sure the rod's wiped down real good and clean. And go back on with a new O-ring. Your piston. Put a little grease on the piston there, the seal and the wear bands. We'll put a little bit more right here on the gland. Two down, two to go. I've been enjoying my coffee this morning too. Okay, there they are. All four of them are finished up. That was a pretty easy job and a, and a pretty easy example of a, of a hydraulic cylinder reseal. And of course, we could have got a little bit more involved with, if we would have done the piston there. And again, like I said, a lot of times you get these cylinders 
they're not this easy to take apart but luckily you know if you guys got these little tractors out there like this Kubota or whatever brand these these cylinders like this if you're getting a little bit of leaking out of the rod right here then it's good case that your rod seal is bad so <clears throat> come in here to your workbench and hold them in the vise and unscrew them glands and pull them apart and get you some new seals it's not that bad but anyway this one's done and I'm gonna move on with some other stuff around here I hope you guys enjoyed watching that so I decided to go ahead and replace my grill and I got me another one of these char grillers and a good time to buy it they had them on sale down at Lowe's for 109 bucks and I went ahead and opted to buy the the bolt-on side uh, smoker box and it's the first time I'm using it actually so I'm doing some chicken quarters and we have some country style pork ribs up there and she's doing pretty good using some of the uh, lump charcoal and then I have some uh, pecan chunks that I'm using for the for the smoke and there's Stella that's her favorite chair that's her favorite spot whenever she's out whenever I'm out here so I'm looking forward to trying those today they're gonna be good I'm doing a recipe that I got off of barbecue pit boys I'm gonna do some barbecue and it'll probably be about a four four hour smoke <clears throat> 